cap on get my hair out of the way so that it won't get in the way of our makeup and we could put a wig on later. Then since Sleeping Beauty has a different eye color than I do, I decided to use the same blue eye color contacts that are circle lenses from PinkyParadise.com that I used in my previous Elsa makeup tutorial. Again, circle lenses are very hard to use and if you're not used to using contacts, you do not have to do this step at all, especially on children. I like to put some eyeshadow base around my eyeballs and near my nose, anywhere that it might crease. And then spray on some makeup setting spray. I like to do this instead of a primer. Now I'm just going to take a light color foundation. I am using Laneige BB Cream. This is one of my absolute favorite foundations lately. If you are doing something for a photo shoot, do not use a BB Cream because it might have a cast in flash photography from all the sunscreen in it. But this was the lightest foundation I had on hand, so that's what I'm going to use today. And it gives a very great natural finish. Doing that all over my face and make sure that you drag that down your neck as well. If you do not have this Maybelline Fit Me foundation I heard is great and I absolutely love Revlon Colorstay. Then using one of my absolute favorite new brushes, this is the Sigma 3D HD Precision Brush. I'll put a link down below where you'll have a promo code to get a discount off because this has been so great for my under eye concealer and you could just flip it over and it gets in the creases near those luxury under eye bags that I possess in my face. I'm using a Poise Cosmetics makeup palette for corrections. If you do not have that because it is super expensive, you can always use my favorite Sony Kashuk Hidden Agenda Concealer as a dupe or any concealer that you just like. Now I'm about to do the very popular Kim K highlighting and contour. First using a highlighter of a cream based makeup that is very light for my skin. Doing that on the high points under my eyes and that highlighter on your chin is just going to make my round face look a little bit more angular than it is. Then I'm just getting a contour cream color. For your contour you might want something that is taupe because it gives a natural shadow instead of just straight up brown that might look dirty. I love using taupes and then later on you can add some bronzing colors of more browns on top to adjust it to whatever shades of contour that you like. You can use brown if you want but I like taupes. I feel like I'm getting very picky and specific but I just want this to look as realistic as if Disney princesses may be real in real life. Doing it in the natural contours, you know, the usual nose, hollow of the cheek, around your forehead and temple, under your jaw, places like that. Then I am getting a damp beauty blender to buff all of that color in. You really want to tap it on there. Do not do rubbing motions to rub off all the makeup. If you do not have a beauty blender, of course it's super expensive. You can use a damp makeup sponge, just a disposable one, or a dupe of the beauty blenders. There are some great ones out there, like Real Techniques has a great one. But girl, if you got the money to splurge for a beauty blender, I cannot tell you enough. It is so worth the money. Then I'm just getting one of my absolute favorite setting powders. This is Bare Minerals Mineral Veil in the Hydrating Powder. Has a tiny bit of sparkle, but a little bit of yellow tone to cancel out any blueness. Doing that in my eye area first and then all over the face. Then I'm just going to use the contour color of the Benefit Hula Bronzer with a giant fan brush on top of those taupe contours that we did earlier. Now I'm just getting my two favorite blushes from Tarte, a peachy one and then a pink rosy one. I like to mix blushes for my Disney princesses. Now it is time for the eyes. Aurora Sleeping Beauty herself has probably one of the easiest eyeshadows in the entire princess line of girls. I'm using the Morphe N35 Neutrals Palette with a very light chocolatey brown that has a little bit of taupe in it that is very, very matte. You want to make sure that this is matte because it's going to look like a natural contour but with a little extra oomph to it. I am getting a flat shader brush and doing a cut crease type motion and then blending it in towards my lid. And then before we move on to any more of the makeup, I almost forgot to put some brows on this girl. We are going to get a light brown eyebrow product. The only one that was the lightest I had on hand was by Besame. This cake liner that's duo for eyeliner, mascara, and eyebrows. It's so, so great. Water activated. Aurora has similar eyebrows to Elsa, but they are a little bit more rounded than Elsa's. I absolutely do love Aurora's eyebrows the best so far out of any of the Disney princesses I've done. Her whole makeup is going to be very simple and natural and not much to it and that's why I love it. 
And then you wanna get a clean blending brush to blend it out. We are gonna prep our eyelashes for some falsies. I am just curling them with the eyelash curler, of course. Now that the eyelashes are curled, I'm just gonna fit them for some of my favorite eyelashes. This is Red Cherry brand. You could get it on Amazon. And then my House of Lashes eyelash glue, this stuff, is made out of pure fairy miracles. I don't know what it is. It is so much easier than duo with the wand and the brush. The great thing about Disney princess makeup, you get a lot better at doing eyelashes, but I'm not an expert level yet. Then I'm going to do the liquid black eyeliner. You could do regular eyeliner that's not liquid as long as it's black, but you're just gonna do a simple wing over those lashes. You could do this before you do your lashes. I just wanna do it after so I could hide the lash line. Now it's time to apply her lips. I am using just a drugstore lip liner pencil in red. Her bottom lip is a little bit smaller than mine. Her mouth is actually wider than mine, but I can't extend it out to my cheeks because then when I laugh or smile, I will make the Joker look jealous because I'll look so ridiculous. Then I'm using this very fancy, expensive lipstick that I had. I just really was attracted to the color and it's perfect for this. I decided I needed to contour my nose a lot more because she has a very, very slim nose. And it's a lot longer than mine, but we can't do no plastic surgery magic here on the YouTubes. And never would I want to do that. That would be terrible. And now that you think your makeup looks semi on point to Aurora's, it is time to put on this wig. I absolutely love the way this wig flows. I am not a fan of the color. It is very, very yellow. It is very, very difficult to manage because it's so much hair. I feel like a Sailor Moon child. And once that's on, I'm gonna put on this Aurora necklace and her crown. Once you think it looks good, you are done with your Aurora makeup. The beauty portion of it, that is. She always has this side eye type look in the Disney movies. It was super hard for me to find a reference picture of her face straight on, but she always has her face tilted or her eyes looking off to the side, looking for her Prince Charming perhaps. This wig definitely reminds me of Princess Peach from Super Mario Brothers. Stay tuned for a very, very scary, creepy, older woman transformation. Younger audiences, I don't know if you want to watch this and this is definitely not good to put on someone who's younger. To start the old woman process of Aurora, I am taking off the wig. This feels like destroying one of my Barbie dolls when I was younger. Taking my false eyelash on this elderly side and painting it white. And then we're gonna get a cream highlighter. The lightest cream highlighter you could find that is close to white, but not all the way white. If you have a darker complexion that's completely gorgeous and not Casper the Friendly Ghost white like I am, you may want to get a highlighter cream color that is maybe more of a yellow tone, but still in the family of flesh tone color that is a yellow base instead of just straight up a yellow paint color. If you do not have Poise Cosmetics correctors for this next step, you could definitely use Ben Nye. I absolutely love their color wheels. I am just using this to do the highlight points on my face. As you can see, you might want to scrunch your eyebrows, your eyes, and then do whatever is popping out the top parts of the wrinkles that you make when you do this on your face. The older you are, the easiest this will be. The more young and round your face is, it is so hard to do an old age makeup, and that's what we're doing in this process. I am one of the most difficult people to do an old age face makeup on, not only because I do look young, but my face is super round and full. And once you think you have enough highlight points on your face, you wanna get that taupe color that we used for the contour of the Kim K look earlier and do some shadow lines. The reason why I'm doing the taupe color is because it's gonna look more natural than just a straight up brown makeup line in the creases to make yourself look old. This will look a lot more natural than a stage theatrical old age makeup. This way you can do more of an outlook of what you might actually look like when you're older. With makeup, instead of prosthetics, you can only age yourself about maybe no more than 20 years or so, but we'll just see how far we could go. Getting a stippling sponge and stippling on some textured brown spots because you're gonna have some broken capillaries in parts of your skin when you age. Bluish brown taupe colors and doing some vein marks because when you get older, you get these amazing veins on the side of your face, even on your eyelids sometimes when you close your eyelids. I cannot wait to get old. I'm one of those weird people that I'm gonna be so excited to see how I age in the process. I know I'm weird. Because girl, come on, we are not gonna look young forever. I don't care how much plastic surgery you might wanna get. Like Elsa says, just let it go. 
Getting my favorite alcohol palette, if you do not have an alcohol palette, you could definitely use maybe some water-based paints, but I would try creams over that because we're going to do some more crazy stuff later. We are getting a color that is like a light brown with some blue in it to do some old age spots on her face. This is very, very strong materials. Alcohol palettes are for more expert level people and so are the next steps of this makeup. Because once you think you have enough wrinkles and highlight points painted on your face, we are going to get a disposable makeup sponge and just pull apart the edges because we do not want a harsh line or a harsh edge on that disposable triangle makeup sponge. You can leave your makeup looking old age like this, but we are going to go even further if you are more of an advanced level makeup artist and are not allergic to liquid latex. I would get some liquid latex. My favorite one is the Bid Nye Clear. Get clear over flesh tone because we are going to be able to see all of the highlights and shadows we did on our face. If you get flesh tone, it's not going to look as good. You're just going to look like a melted Barbie. You want to age the side of your face that is your dominant makeup applying hand. And if you're allergic to liquid latex, you could also use gelatin. Just melt it in a microwave safe bowl for no more than 10 seconds and please test it on your arm first so that you do not burn your face. Use it in the same process as the latex here. And you're gonna stretch parts of your face. I'm starting off right by my eyebrow, but don't put this on your actual eyebrow hairs. You just wanna stretch the skin around your eyebrow and put on some liquid latex. What we're doing is, remember when we did those squinty marks on our face and scrunched up our face? You wanna stretch your skin opposite on the lines of your skin where it's squinting and then let it dry. And then you're gonna do it again with another layer. And then you are gonna do a third layer. You could do some powder in between so that it won't stick on yourself if you have no patience. This is very, very hard to do on yourself. If you have a model to do this on, I would try that because this is very difficult. And then on certain parts, I'm gonna take my lipstick off and get a spoon. I know this is gonna look weird, but I put it on the inside of my cheek and to stretch that cheek out and put more liquid latex. It's almost like if you ever have made bald caps, I know that's a very advanced thing to do, but you're gonna stipple that on and let it dry with that spoon in your mouth. I know this looks so weird and odd, but it's going to stretch out your cheeks so that when you let it go, it will wrinkle up like cute old women laugh lines. You're gonna contort your face, you're gonna look weird. You're gonna make sure that each layer is completely dry and clear. That's why I told you to use the clear liquid latex it's going to really make sure that each layer is clear because if you don't, it'll stick on itself and gunk up and you'll just ruin it and you'll have holes in your face and actual wrinkle marks. What this is doing is actually wrinkling your skin to make it look old and once you take this off at the end, it won't permanently wrinkle your face. You might have little creases. The smell of liquid latex is foul and I do not like it, but this just gives such a great effect. And once you think you have enough wrinkles from the latex on that side of the face, you might want to get your alcohol palette, or if you do not have that, get some aqua paints and let it drip down inside of the crevices of all of those wrinkles that we made with a watered down taupe like brownish, I want to say with slight tints of blue in it. This will get down in those crevices like I said and make them stand out more. And then I'm taking my lipstick off more on that side of the old face and doing some blue. And then I'm going to get some Ben Nye white makeup for hair and whiten my eyebrow on that side of the old age. And then with the other side of my pristine, beautiful Aurora face, I am putting more of that lipstick that I had to take off earlier. And once you think you're done with the old age side, we are gonna get our wig again. And this time, I had painted that side of the wig that our old age is on white. And then I'm gonna go even further to take out that blue contact on the old age side and put in the white one. Cause I just think those cloudy white eyes that some people get with cataracts is just so beautiful. Oddly.